Hello and welcome to and read another chapter and as the title says this is the anti-TBR tag. I will leave the original content creator which is Nicole and her books linked down below for you along with the questions so that if you would like to participate you can. And well let's just kind of get started. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make this video mainly because I, I don't know it just seems kind of an interesting perspective but usually I watch videos to get book ideas not take away book ideas or just content I don't know how I don't know how to put it but it didn't it didn't seem like a purposeful video but when I was watching Christina shelves and she was putting up some of the reasons or some of the anti TBR books um, again it just starts that book dialogue uh, conversation back and forth that is just so much fun and why I love YouTube and so I was like okay I'll join in so without further ado let's get into the questions so question number one is a popular book that everyone loves and you have no interest in reading well if my mom is watching she will be yelling out the answer to this question immediately and for many of you, it will be a what is wrong with you girl answer. Francine Rivers' uh, Redeeming Love. I've tried it three times now, and I genuinely just have no desire to do that book. Uh, I think it's, I think Felicia Masonheimer makes some strong, valid points against that book, and how... It, it, she she does it so well because it's a lot of the things that I couldn't figure out how to express why I had such a problematic uh, view of this book. Um, it's Christian romance. It borderlines way too much detail, and it's 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 a retelling of Hosea. And if you know the book of Hosea and you read the story, you can kind of get an idea of where it will go. Obviously, lots of choices made that just aren't the best ones. But again, Felicia Masonheimer has made some terrific um, arguments for that book. And they are saved as a highlight on her Instagram page. And so you can just click that and see... All of the information there because I think she just she summed it up amazingly so that's that's a Christian book that I have no desire to read I'm trying to think of um, some more contemporary probably like Daisy Jones and the six I just have no no desire to read I don't typically like um, modern music um, a lot of what I listen to is like the Everly Brothers and you can kind of see what kind of music I like um, by the music that's put on this channel. Um, a lot of it is chosen based on the, the big band swing. I enjoy those, that, those, I enjoy that type of music or classical. So no, no desire to read that. Okay. A classic book or author you have no dis interest in reading. And the first one that came to mind was Catcher in the Rye by R.D. Selinger, I think. Um, and it's basically about a man or boy, depending on your point of view, uh, who discovers his sexuality. Is how it has been summed up by so many people. I have no desire. Um, another classic... Probably anything by Edith Wharton. I did Ethan Frome in English class. Couldn't stand it. I did not like it. it I don't like The Great Gatsby, and it had a lot of Great Gatsby uh, feelings for me. And I picked up another book of hers, and I messaged a friend who loves Edith Wharton, and I'm like, does every book have adultery in it? As, as it, like some point theme and she couldn't think of one that didn't and so I was like okay this this author isn't for me so there's a couple classics I really have no interest to continue okay an author whose books you have no interest in reading Stephen King comes to mind 
but he has a couple that if I'm desperate on an island and those are the only books to read, I'll pick them up, but not his horror books. Um, but there's one, I think, about the JFK assassination that sounds really interesting. I think The Stand is a thriller, not a horror. Um, that would be interesting, but I, if I never read his books, I'm okay with that. Completely fine. A problematic author whose books you have no interest in reading. So as a Christian, my immediately thought goes to goes to authors who have completely distorted Christian truth. And those people are like Joel Austin, um, Joyce Meyer, um, there's uh, T.D. T. J. T. D. Jakes, I think, um, and and those kind of things. Typically, they're the prosperity gospel. I I don't want to. I won't read. They're they're problematic authors for me, and I don't want to read those. If I have to chew so much in order to get the meat and and spit out the bones, if I have to work my jaw so much it is not worth it for me there are so many amazing authors out there um, nonfiction that I have not read their books and it will take me forever to get through so that I would prefer just kind of reading theirs than that okay an author you have read a couple books from and have decided their books are not for you the first one that comes to mind is the children's author um, uh, per Perky Rankins? Let me see. Lynn Ray Perkins, and that's my uh. Oh. So that one would be Lynn Ray Perkins. That one immediately comes to mind. Um. Uh, I'm trying to think of like more adult contemporary. That one's hard. Hmm. The problem with this question is several times I've picked up books by author or books written by a author. I don't like their books. I don't like their books. But there's one that I think is their best work. And it's usually like a lower rated book. But I think it's their best work and I really enjoy that. So, hmm. Huh. Uh, Danielle Steele, may no, Debbie, Debbie McComer, I think, is one. <sighs> I think I've read a couple of hers and just decided it's just fluff, which I kind of suspected, but wasn't sure. It's the only one I can think of. Maybe Debbie McComer, Linda Ray Perkins, I'm just, at this point I've read a few of her books and don't like them. That one, that one might need a little more thought in it, which is interesting because I think, I know there's some out there that I'm like, oh yeah. Probably another one would be Celeste Ng. I tried Little Fires Everywhere, which I know many people enjoyed, and I thought it was okay. There was just, it was okay. It was, eh, not my, not my cup of tea. So maybe that one. I haven't really read a couple books, so that's really only one book by that. Okay. A genre you have no interest in or a genre you tried to get into and couldn't. If it's pure romance, I, I do not want to pick up the book. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to open that door. I want nothing to do with that. Um, horror is probably another one. I have no desire. Like... G.K. Chesterton said, no man, I want to say it the right way, but no man knows how good he really is until he knows how bad he really is or something like that. And I keep thinking of that when it comes to horror. I'm like, I, I, uh, mm, 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 mm. No man's really any good until he knows how bad he is or might be. <sighs> yeah. So probably horror is not, I think the closest 
think I've come to horror and it's I know it's like a mild horror is um, Killers of the Flower Moon which I, Hit, Hicks Picks Books mentioned I think in one of her tags I don't think it was this tag um, but she mentioned it in a tag and I thought that was interesting like um, uh, vintage books that you haven't read or the vintage book tag or something like that um, and I was like, oh, I read that, and that was really hard for me. Typically don't want to pick things up like that, but I've got Devil in the White City that I want to read by Eric Leeson. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, horror is probably up there. Also, I don't like... What it... It's, it's married couple distorted things. What do they call that? Good, like psycho thrillers, but it has to do with the married wife, husband. Yeah, I, I have no interest. I like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's funny, but that's not messing with you. I have no interest in that. Mm -mm. So other ones. A book you have bought but will never read. This can be a book you have unhauled or returned to the library unread. A couple of things that have come to mind. Um, a Study in Charlotte is one that I bought and unhauled after reading a few pages. And it's just covered in language and prep school, I think is what you call it. And... Like those elite clubs that you have to go through torture to get into. No interested in that. Um, which is so bummer. I was, I had high hopes for that one. Um, and then The List was another one that I had really high hopes for. And it's basically like a list of words that you could only speak. So um, a lot of dystopian books it's like uh, things ideas that you can't have. Well, this is words that you're allowed to speak of and you can't bring in any other words because they bring in conflict and da, da 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 And I was so interested in that. That is what I knew of it and what I had heard people talk about and I was so interested in it and I got it and then a friend was reading it and she's like, you won't like this. She said it's a, it has a lot of environmental um, agendas in there and I don't like things like that and it has to do with the Ark and how Noah's Ark plays a part in this dystopian futuristic world and how we're ruining everything and yeah I was like it kind of lost everything for me now so that's pro those are probably the two books that I can think of that I have bought and then unhauled um, mainly because once I learn more about a book and I realize this is not the book for me, it goes out immediately. I don't have shelf space to keep all these books that, um, yeah, I don't have shelf space. I want to keep the book. I have enough trouble just finding shelf space for the books that I want to keep and read and enjoy and blah, 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 blah. This is not a good one. Okay, a series you have no interest in reading or a series you have started and have DNF'd. A series that I have no interest in reading would be Stephanie Meyer's The Twilight series. Um, I saw, I think, the f first two or three, the first, first and second films. No interest in it. It's a really interesting idea of what Stephanie Meyer did to create this vampire world, but I've heard that the books have terrible grammar, the, the writing style is terrible, and since I really have no interest in reading vampires, eh, I'll probably never read that. Um, a series I started and DNF'd was, I want to say it's Sarah J. Mass, but it's not. It's, and I can't say her name, but the first one was The, the Ember. Ember, yeah, Ember in the Ashes by Seba Tahir, and it's a young adult, it's brutal, it's dystopian, it's, it was just so full of language, and it just didn't have enough pull for me to continue the series. Again, it was just really... It 
it was like brutal to sh for shock value is what it felt like and just yeah I probably won't I uh, yeah. and then a new release you have no interest in, no interest in reading what are the new releases I have no idea okay one that I've heard people talk about and mixed reviews that could possibly have interested me, but I've decided not for me, would probably be People We Meet on Vacation. So that's, that's the only one I can think of. And then Taylor Jenkins Reid is another one that a lot of people talk about, and I just don't think I'll ever get to her. Him? Her? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh... I think that's it for the tag. It's definitely a longer video than I thought it would be. But, I mean, we know me. I like to chat. I'm, I'm a chatter. I'm a chit chat person. Chatty Kathy. Whew. Sure thing I could think of for those books. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. That'll help me kind of know what type of videos to film more. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I probably won't have my daughter do this. I don't think, I don't think there'll be a lot here that she'll be able to answer. So it's just kind of me here. Um, but don't forget, everything's going to be linked down below to check out so that if you want to film it, go ahead. And then if you do, leave it down below so that I can go watch it because I, I'm finding that I'm really enjoying these videos and kind of seeing the perspective people have on certain things. Um, especially when somebody has a different perspective than what I would have. It's been very interesting. So I'll see you next time, but until next time, have another cup of coffee. I'm going to need a third one today and read another chapter.